double croissant sandwich. Egg and meat and cheese and meat and cheese. That's right. The double croissant sandwich. Wake up with the king. There is truth in advertising. Yes, I swear. Yes, I swear. Got new Nikes on my feet and beat out Sassoon in my hair. I can sure use a Budweiser fruit of the loom underwear. There is truth in advertising. I swear. Why would they lie to me when they love what they sell? Plus, we all know that the liars have a special fire in hell on the television, radio, and in the magazine. The advertising gods will perpetuate the American dream. And let it be, let it be Now I know that I don't need to buy Everything to try to sell me But so easily divided Is a fool that is my need There is truth in advertising Let it be Why would they lie to me When they love what they sell Plus we all know that the liars Got a special fire in hell On the television, radio, and in the magazines The advertising got to perpetuate Introducing that king of fun, the one who's okay with us kids, the Magic Burger King! In person? Yeah! I'm the marvelous, magical Burger King. I can do most anything. Now watch me, kids, when I twist my ring like magic. We're at Burger King! It's more Magic Burger King. I'm the marvelous, magical Burger King. I can do most anything. I love magic and food that's fun. So, I'll make a burger disappear, make it come back here. Turn apples into pies right before your eyes. Turn onions into rain. As we can see. Put a shiver in the shake. It's easy for me. I'm the marvelous, magical Burger King. I can do most anything. I love magic and food that's fun. So, you got fun, fun, fun. If there was ever an example of an ad campaign that was the edgy kid at school, I think the Burger King would win that title. Burger King, who now makes bizarre ad campaigns surrounding things like the Unhappy Meal, really has stepped up to the plate and become that weird pseudo-emo kid we all knew in science class who, despite coming from a well-to-do family who loved and supported him, insisted that his soul was in fact tortured. But it's important to carve a niche for oneself, especially in the ad game. And Burger King is interesting in that they have carved multiple niches for themselves. While they managed to not only have the Burger King Kids Club back in the day, they also, in the mid-2000s, wound up with a very iconic mascot, the Burger King himself. But you might be surprised to learn that this was not, in fact, the King's first outing. So let's then return to 1955. For the first few years of his life, the Burger King remained a fairly static image and didn't, in fact, gain any sort of personality until the early 70s, when they started using a small animated version of him titled after something that sounds like a shitpost, the Kurger Bing, voiced by Alan Swift. However, in 76, he was replaced by the marvelous magical Burger King, a red-bearded Tudor-era king who ruled the Burger Kingdom and performed magic tricks. These were also discontinued fairly quickly in the late 80s for the BK Kids Club. The interesting thing about that magical Burger King era is that it was very clearly the company trying to outdo McDonald's, who, at the time, were well invested in their McDonald Land campaign featuring Grimace and Mayor McCheese. Not to be outdone, Burger King included a plethora of side characters for the king himself to rule over, which included Sir Shake a lot, who frankly sounds like a DJ, the Burger Thing, the Wizard of Fries, and the Duke of Doubt, which 
sounds more like a character from the Phantom Tollbooth, honestly, than a burger ad campaign. But you know what? None of this really matters. Because none of this is what you're here for. And while the BK Kids Club has its fans, the only real ad campaign anyone remembers is the Burger King. In 2003, Miami-based advertising firm Crispin, Porter, and Baguski took over the advertising for the Burger King company. During production of these new ads, an employee at the firm found a 1970s-era oversized Burger King head for sale on eBay, which then served as the general inspiration and nightmare for many others for the king himself. In fact, that very head was actually restored to its former glory and used for the Burger King's costume. The Burger King is, first and foremost, an absolute creeper. Showing up in your bedroom, your shower, behind your closet door, always ready to hand you a steaming hot meal. This guy doesn't know the meaning of personal space, and if he does, he willingly chooses to ignore it. The Burger King was one of the first truly viral marketing campaigns, where significant word of mouth helped raise awareness of the campaign and thus lead the character. He was so off-putting that articles and various trade publications labeled the persona the Creepy King, something Burger King came to favor and use. And while the Burger King is memorable enough for his stalker-like persona, something many of you may not remember is that he spawned a slew of video games produced by Burger King for modern gaming consoles. In 2006, Burger King developed and released three titles starring the King that were available for purchase with a meal at the price point of $4 for the Xbox 360 console. These games include Big Bumpin', a bumper car game, Sneak King, in what is quite possibly the most realistic of the three, wherein the king stealthily sneaks around unsuspecting people and then delivers them food they didn't order, and Pocket Bike Racer, which is just essentially a mini bike game. All three titles, not shockingly, received low ratings from various game critics. And as if the king wasn't creepy enough, in 2010, Burger King attempted a second time to launch the character in the UK with a series of TV and newspaper commercials, with sneak peeks accompanied by the tag that simply says, He's coming. As if that isn't fucking ominous. However, due to sluggish sales, and maybe even the fact that the king likely resulted in traumatized children, he was eventually retired in 2011. And while you may think I'm joking about that whole traumatized children statement, the actual reason given by Burger King's chief financial officer, Josh Kobza, for the removal of the mascot was, in fact, he scared away women and children. Oh, not men, though. Men can handle the king. Women and children, no, no. Men are fine. Big, strong men. And while the Burger King himself is now nothing more than a relic of the oddity of mid-2000s ad campaigns, There's one other aspect of his career that I think needs to be discussed, because it's confusing as hell. In 2015, the Burger King company paid $1 million to have the character included in Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s entourage for his May 2015 fight against Manny Pacquiao. And as if that wasn't bizarre enough, Burger King then went on to ask horse trainer Bob Baffert if he'd be willing for $200,000 to allow the King to stand behind him in the grandstands during the televised broadcast of the 2015 Belmont Stakes, where American Pharaoh won the Triple Crown. Baffert had turned down $150,000 to allow him to appear in the 2015 Preakness Stakes, understandably. But the company persisted, and the king wound up on hand with Baffert when, at the 2018 Belmont Stakes, he became the second trainer to win two triple crowns with the horse Justify. And while perhaps the leap can be made that they wanted him there because of the crown connection, I think many of us, myself included, are likely confused 
as to why the fuck the Burger King is hanging around horse races. Also, if he was at the Preakness Stakes, nothing to do with crowns. Just saying. It almost seems as though, with no ad campaign to utilize him in, the company is just renting him out like some sort of medieval clown, which makes him all the creepier. He could now, theoretically, just show up anywhere, at any given time, for absolutely no real reason. Eventually, we might just see him showing up at ballparks and kids' birthday parties. You don't know. I have to say, I think the king is perhaps the only mascot to be retired simply because he was literally too creepy. Customers were unsettled by him, and thusly he had to be yanked from rotation. Certainly a point of pride, I'm sure, because there will likely never be another mascot retired for simply scaring the shit out of people. But the king made his mark nonetheless. And for those of us who remember him, we remember him vividly. Wishing we didn't. I know that sometimes, late at night, when I go into my kitchen, I still expect that creepy fuck in his plastic mask to be there, ready to give me a burger and the heebie-jeebies. Burgers boiled right for a 10-gallon appetite. It's always something special. 